Thanks, Scott. And I'm here with Dr. Robert Reynolds, and we're talking about ADHD and how the disorder doesn't just impact the person who has it, but it also impacts the whole family. We're going to start by looking at what implications it has on marriages. So thank you so much, doctor, for being with me. Always good to be here, Kara. So, so there's a whole, adults could have ADHD too, but in this case, we're talking about, let's say you have a child with ADHD. Mm -hmm. It really can put a strain on the marriage in what way? Well, oftentimes parents take different points of view on how to treat the child's behavior. One parent might take a, a nurturing, supportive, uh, sometimes enabling point of view. The other parent may take a hard line, more of a disciplinary point of view. Mm -hmm. And the parents start to clash. And that becomes a big problem because the parents really need to be united on how they deal with the child. If they have a child with ADHD, that child's behavior is probably running that household. Right. And so the parents really need to team up together to figure out how they're going to manage this child. So that's an important part is making sure you're united front. If we go back to the, the graphic that we had up, it also can just lead in the in the marriage because they're so exhausted dealing with whatever they're dealing with, it can lead with a uh, loss of intimacy. I, I gotta say, I, I've seen so many parents over the years who raise raising children or a child with ADHD and their marriage is starting to die because they don't have any energy left for each other. And if that starts to fall apart, this is when we start to see divorce rates climb. You know, it's an interesting statistic. If you've got a child who's got a serious behavioral problem, within the first seven years of that child's life, there's a 75% chance that couple will divorce. Mm. If they make it past the seven and a half year mark, actually the divorce rate goes way down because the parents have figured it out. Okay, so and, and also that age is an important age in the yes, child's development. Um, if we can go back to that screen again, I want to just uh, talk about some of the other points. So these are typical things you'll hear from parents. Confusion, am I doing the right thing or despair? I must just be a bad parent. I think that can come also from the grandparents or whatever because people are thinking, oh, you're just not disciplining your child right. It sometimes does. Sometimes it just comes from the parent themselves. They, they feel so defeated, so overwhelmed. Everything they try seems to backfire and not work. And when they, sometimes when they'll go to their neighbors and they see their neighbor's kids acting so well, or they go to school and sometimes the child doesn't dis uh, display these behaviors in school, the parent then concludes, well, well it must be my, my fault. fault. Yeah. And let's talk about the siblings because there may be children in the family who don't have ADHD and what they go through. And you say uh, it's almost like they feel like they might be growing up in a war zone because perhaps the parents are always fighting or they can be afraid. Sometimes kids have aggression. Well, they do. Uh, and it's quite common, by the way, in cases where there are siblings, for the other child not just to not have ADHD, but sometimes to be almost a model child, well-regulated, does their homework without arguments, does their chores without complaints and never gets attention for doing all those good things because the child who's got the ADHD is getting all the attention for all the negative behaviors. So it sets up a great deal of frustration with the other siblings, and when there is anger and aggression involved, it alienates that child even further. Now, the positive point, when I end on the positive point, there are solutions, and that's what you do at your clinic. Um, there, you, just even learning about ADHD and, and getting some good concrete information and a plan can level the playing field. It really does, and getting good practical information on how to proceed, how to succeed with these children. And I want to say this too, when we talk about the positive sides of things, when parents figure this out and they actually create an environment at home that's well engineered, the child who has ADHD can thrive. These are kids who sometimes are the brightest, most creative, outside the box kids who have tremendous amount of energy to contribute to society. And so the parents, if they can help that child manage that energy, this kid can take off. Right, and it can be done. And sometimes, and that's what, what you're doing, is um, a lot of times it can be done without medication. This is what we teach parents all the time, how to do this medication free. Okay, so you've got some inf interesting inf information coming up because Dr. Reynolds is holding two free seminars next week. So if this is resonating with you, he's going to be uh, diagnosing uh, on how to diagnose and help those with ADHD. One will be Wednesday, November 1st from 6.30 to 8.30. And then if you can't make that one, there's one on the morning of Saturday, November 4th. To sign up, head to Reynolds clinic.com.